What's going on guys? It's Cliffy here. Welcome back to round two of our, I'm just trying to even think what this is, our 5-5 five -five World Cup with New Zealand, taking on Afghanistan, a team I don't think I've ever played against in Don Bradman Cricket 14, which is strange because the game has nearly been out for four years. Never played as them, never played against them. So hopefully we can go one and one today. You guys have been doing awesome smashing that like button. Let's aim for 50 likes today. Remember, if you are new, please do hit that subscribe button. So if you do not remember or have not seen our first game, we did take on Bangladesh. We had a good win uh, to start things off. So hopefully we can carry on in that form heading into this one here. So um, we have started off pretty well. Three dot balls so far. Uh, and that's kind of, it is kind of what you expect when it comes to 5-5 five -five games. But then again, Sometimes you do get those big hits, you get those sixes, and that is what we are here to look for, boys. We're here to see the sixes, we are here to see the wickets falling at a very quick interval. So, um, I thought that potentially could have been a court bowl, but not the case. I'm going to move on and quickly talk about a game that happened last night featuring New Zealand. Um, obviously, for New Zealanders... Not the best of results by any stretch of the imagination. Going down 2-0 in the Chapel Hadley series. We have now lost that trophy. Um, I believe the third and final one-day game potentially is on Friday, so in two days' time. Um, but again, don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. But just, I don't know what it is. Our bowlers just seem a bit lacklustre. Fielding, you know, putting down chances. David Warner made us pay. We missed a chance, a, a catch, a ball. Well, not a catchable chance. It was a hard chance uh, from Jimmy Nisham. But, you know, it's one of those chances that if you take, it completely changes the game. Warner goes on to make 117. I believe now he has the most uh, one-day centuries in a calendar year for an Australian. I'm not sure if that's for all nations, uh, but definitely for Australia. And he is now, I believe, uh Fourth on the top five fastest to 10 one-day international hundreds. I think Quinter de Cox way at the top. I think he only took uh, 55 or something. Incredible how good that young man is when it comes to one-day cricket and obviously converting his starts. He just seems to score runs for absolute fun in the one-day arena. But saying that, he is, still, he is a very good test player and a very good T20 player as well. But Australia did get... Uh, I think it was 378, so obviously a huge total uh, to try and get from the get-go, and New Zealand were basically out of it. I think uh, Travis Head scored another 50, so back-to-back -back 50s for him, so that'll give him some good confidence. It'll give the Australian public good confidence in him as well, because obviously... Um, it is much publicised that he is in this team basically as Glenn Maxwell's replacement because there's been a few things going on behind the scenes with Glenn. Um, and Travis Head, you know, he hasn't disappointed. He's come in, uh, bowled very well, uh, sorry, batted very well. Uh, he did bowl a bit last night as well and was very good with the ball. Um, but yeah, just very, very good and very efficient. Obviously, two 50s in a row. You can't ask for too much more from that. Um, he played aggressive as well, you know, that is one thing I think that Glenn Maxwell, uh, you know, would do differently to Travis Head. Travis Head would play, you know, a bit more conventional. But last night, Travis Head had about 52 off 37. Um, so when the time was right, he really did go and pick up his scoring rate. Mitchell Marsh, again, proving he is such an asset to this Australian side, uh, you know, especially in the limited overs forms of the game. I think if he can get his test batting, you know, just up a little bit, he only averages about 25 in test matches. But if he could manage to go and try and get his test match uh, batting sorted, he would be such a great number six for Australia. You know, his bowling is very good. Uh, I think it's a reason a lot of the time that he was left in that number six position in the Australian test side was mainly just because um, of that bowling, that fourth seam bowling option. He can definitely go and get the job done. And I mean, last night we saw how destructive his batting could be. I think he hit 72 uh, off about 30 deliveries or something to close the end of the inning. So you can't ask for too much more than that. Um, let's just hope, obviously, his batting will, for Australian fans' point of view, you guys will be hoping that his test match batting, his first-class batting, uh, kind of, I wouldn't say sorts itself out, because he is still a decent first-class batter. Um, I think he really is just trying to find himself, uh, you know, in test match cricket. He has gone out uh, and played aggressively before. I think when they've been in Bangladesh, uh, scored some runs, scored some good, quick runs. Uh and I think he is kind of just stuck uh, in a rock and a hard place. Like, he doesn't know what his role in the team should be, really, I guess. You know, does he need to go out and bat long innings? Uh, can they rely on the lower order to go and make up if he does go out trying to play aggressive? 
And, you know, it is a, it probably is a difficult situation for him. He is really trying to figure out, you know, what what he should do for the best of the team. And I think Mitchell Marsh, you know, his natural game is to go out and play aggressively and to try and score runs quickly. So um, when we have seen him, I guess, go into his shell a little bit, that's where, you know, he has struggled when it's come to the batting. That one there may not actually carry, and it hasn't. It's gone out to the man in the deep. So we get our first wicket. It has taken uh, quite a long time as well, and we have really pegged. I must say, pegged the Afghanis back towards the back end of the innings. Remember, they were 20 for none off two overs. So uh, uh, bleh, off the next 10, they have only got seven runs, and we have managed to pick up one wicket. That one there has gone for a six, though, so that is what they'll like to see. They want to try and get probably a few more runs, aim somewhere around... Uh, you know, that 45, possibly the 50. There's no time for doing that in 5-5 five, five cricket, though, son. There is no time to leave the ball. But back to that New Zealand game. The, the New Zealand team, there just doesn't seem to be something quite right with them at the moment. Um, I think, you know, betting-wise, we did lose by about 100 runs in this innings. Um, but I think that was just due to the mammoth total that was being chased. It's one of those things where, you know, you either go and get close or win the game or you lose by 100, 150. And that was the case for us yesterday. Um, there were still some good performances with the bat. Jimmy Nisham at number four, um, he has surprised me a little bit. When I saw it and saw that he was coming in at number four, listed to come in at number four, I thought, surely this is a joke. Um... You know, surely Colin Munro will get up there. He will get to bat at number four. De Gronho maybe at five. And uh, there is a nice wee edge from Wagner. So a bit unusual to see him pitching it in on a good length. But he does manage to grab the outside edge. But yeah, Nisham, he really has impressed. He as well has scored back-to-back -back 50s. Um, and ideally, like going forward, um, you know, Ross Taylor, he's not old by any stretch of the imagination. But he is getting towards the end of his career. So to have a number four... Um, if you could have someone like Jimmy Nisham, who's going to be decent with the bat, go out and get your 50s, uh, you know, more than regularly, and be able to bowl you, you know, five plus overs batting inside that top four, that is an absolute great asset to have. You know, a lot of teams say, and a lot of commentators, a lot of former players around the world say, that if you have a player inside the top six who can get through 10 overs for you, it really can help the balance of the side. It really can mean, you know, that you can go out and, you know, play those six specialist batsmen uh, and not have to worry about playing an all-rounder because you can get enough overs out of those guys. And I think Australia at the moment with the team they do have, uh, you know, this is a perfect example. Obviously, Mitchell Marsh... In that all-rounder category, he is more than capable of bowling uh, 10 over spurts. Uh, but we've seen that obviously Travis Head, very handy with the ball, can just bowl off breaks, uh, which especially I think heading into you know somewhere like the subcontinent could be very, very useful. Um, David Warner, we've seen him bowl in test matches as well. Steve Smith, obviously, when he started his career, started off as a, a, well, a leg spin bowler. So... Um, there is, you know, there is plenty of options in that Australian top five. And I think that is where a little bit, uh, you know, New Zealand is lacking a bit. When Brendan McCullum was captaining the side, Kane Williamson, you know, he would bowl occasionally. I wouldn't say all the time, um, but did bowl occasionally when needed. Guptill's kind of turned into, you know, that player in the top six who, not so much in one day internationals, but in test matches, is a guy that, you know, if it is starting to turn a little bit, you can turn to him and he can look at potentially giving you some wickets. Um, he did pick up, I think it was three for sometime, sometime recently. I can't quite remember when it was. Um, yeah, I am just trying to think. I, I can't, can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was actually in a one day international um, that he did go out and bowl, bowled a few. And I think he did pick up, uh, two wickets. It was in the space, I think it was a 12 ball over, over that he bowled, like he bowled a lot of wides um, and I don't think there was a no ball but a lot of wides but he did manage to pick up two wickets um, and it did work quite well so um, it's a tactic that you know if you can make it work and it does work, you do have those players inside that top five that can get that job done, it does make it a lot easier on the balance side of things. So Going back to Jimmy Nisham, if he can do that, if he can bat number four, number five, uh, and can get through 10 overs, he did only bowl one um, last night, but if he can get through 10 overs or even seven or eight overs, that is going to make it a lot easier uh, on the guys that are batting lower down. And what it also does do 
is that if one of your bowlers is going out and going for a bit of tap, like we saw last night, I think Matt Henry went for 90, Trent Bolt went for 80, uh, it, it does give you that option to go and... It gives you that option that you, you can spread it around if need be. And I think the issue the New Zealand side has at the moment is that going into this tour, technically, we only have four out-and-out -out batsmen in this side. Gupto and Latham opening, Williamson at three, Colin Munro. All the rest are all-rounders. And I think that is the issue that we have at the moment, is that we have placed not too much trust, but we have... I, th I personally, I think we have too many all-rounders in the side when you look at things. Um, if you look at the lineup from last night, uh, obviously Guptill and, and Latham opening, that is something that's not going to change. Uh, Williamson at three, again, that is not going to change. Nisham at four, all-rounder. Uh, five, I think, last night was... Who batted at five? I think Colin Munro, again, all-rounder. Uh, sorry, Colin Munro, uh, better. Colin de Gronholm, all-rounder. Uh, BJ Watling, wicketkeeper. Mitchell Santner, all-rounder. So all of a sudden, inside our top seven, we only have four out-and-out -out batsmen, and we have two all-rounders. And I think that's the issue. Mitchell Santner, again, all-rounder. These guys are, are good with the ball. They're decent enough with a bat and ball. Uh, you know, Mitchell Santner, and we saw what DeGronholm can do in the test match. But personally... We need some more batting firepower, and that is something that has really let us down in these two one-day games. We have been chasing big, big scores, and I think, you know, had we had someone like Ross Taylor batting at number four, and, you know, dare I say it, even Bryn McCullum, you know, being him back in the side, um, potentially batting at number five, you know, it is quite low down for him, but uh, it is something that potentially, you know, he could have batted and given us that firepower. Even someone like Luke Ronke, you know, I don't really rate the guy when it comes to, well, just any form of international cricket. But, again, he was that guy that provided that firepower in the middle order. You know, if the top order had failed, you know, McCullum and Guptill hadn't scored runs, Williamson had not anchored the innings, you know, Ronke could come in and counter-attack. Now, BJ Watling, very good batsman, much better gloveman, rate him a lot higher than Luke Ronke, but doesn't quite have that aggressive nature um, that Ronke did used to have. That's a very nice square drive from Tommy Latham. One of his favourite shots is not going to go for four, but we will go and pick up three. So we're just moving along quite nicely towards this total, actually. We haven't gone and been aggressive. Um, and I don't think we lost a wicket last game either. I don't think Kano did have to come in. Uh, but saying that, I am going to start to go down the ground for a guptal special. I'm just trying to hit that sight screen, you know, get that 50 experience that you do get for doing that. But um, we are only chasing about 40 odd. And as you can see, the run rate is now down uh, just above six. So there is still plenty of time uh, left to go. And there are plenty of holes in the outfield still, which is quite surprising. It was the same with me though. Um, the situation that we were in, obviously the first uh, two overs did go for 20 runs. We did really pull it back towards the back end, but I didn't change the field. I didn't go defensive. Uh, I still kept, you know, the, just the three guys outside the inner ring, the inner circle, uh, and we will just go and pick up one there, actually, because I did not know that there was a man down there, but that's all right. We will uh, carry on there. 15, I think 15 off 10 for Guppy and 13 off 7 for Latham. So both really contributing uh, really well. And that one there has actually gone Mr. Fielder. We will just pick up the one, but a bit of a risky shot. Starting to go a little bit more aggressive. And um, I must say that we are at a similar stage in the game to where Bangladesh were after three overs. And I think the only difference was is that Bangladesh really did struggle in those last couple of overs. We really did go out and... Um, you know, just contain, just bowl some dot balls, get some wicket balls. Obviously, we picked up one with Nisham. Uh, we picked up one with Wagner as well, the court behind. So it really was just about getting those dot balls. And that is what I've found so far in this 5-5 competition. It is not all about going out and slogging. It's not all about trying to pick up a wicket every ball. If you can get those dots, which is what we did, you know, it is key. It's down to 10 off 10 now. So we only need 41. Um, and it just makes it you know, easy. And you don't have to go out. There is plenty of gaps in the field. And uh, that, you know, it's just easy going. We probably are going to take this into the last over, but we've done it risk-free. Somewhat. I mean, our running between the wickets has been a little bit uh, iffy, you would say. Um, 
but yeah, apart from that, it has been very, very solid. We haven't done anything uh, unusual. We haven't done anything rash. We've just gone, played the ball where it is, and uh, have gone, deposited that one for a six. We win again, and uh, that does take us two from two against the two, I wouldn't say associate uh, Asian sides, but the two on the lower tier of the Asian scale. Martin Guptill, man of the match for his 22 off 12. Can't leave out Tom Latham. 20 off 11, both really contributing well. And um, as you can see, the bowlers just going for, you know, not going for too many whatsoever. Saudi was expensive in that first over he bowled, but we did really bring it back after the end of the second over. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap things up here. Do hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been Cliffy, your King of Career Mode, signing out.